Christy from Shark Pixel here. I just want to show you a very quick and easy way for you to get rid of flyaway hairs that I think is going to be almost invaluable for you in saving you time when it comes to your workflow and retouching portraits in your day to day work. So I know most of us have had this kind of thing happen where you're retouching an image and you come in here to get rid of these hairs and you use the you know healing brush or the spot healing brush to do it so I'm gonna sample here and then I'm gonna try and get rid of this hair and you know you get this this blending effect that happens here when you use the healing brush or something like that because what's happened is you've hit almost a transfer edge in the image that changes color so you know what exactly do you do to get rid of the flyaway hairs without having this happen there has got to be a simpler way to get rid of flyaway hairs so um, I am going to show you that right now okay um, let's start with the image and let's start by duplicating the background layer I've got a copy of the background here and very simply, we're going to take that whole layer and we're going to go into noise and dust and scratches. And if you think about it, the, um, the dust and scratches filter is isolating things that look like scratches and things that look like dust in an image, right? And it's trying to get rid of those things. So what I've found is if you think objectively about what a flyaway hair is, it's kind of like a scratch on an image. Um, at least, you know, that's what I think. So what I do is I look at the image and I do quite a heavy radius on the dust and scratches filter. And that's okay. Don't freak out. It's not going to look like this. Um, for long trust me and what I'm doing now is dragging through looking at the preview and making sure that you know indeed all of my flyaway hairs are um, affected by this global this global change and it and it looks like it it looks like it's doing a pretty good job of getting rid of all of the flyaways right okay we're gonna hit okay now by holding down Option or Alt if you're on a PC and clicking the mask button here, it's going to give you a black filled mask which means that none of that layer is showing. The next step that I do is I come over here to an area of the image and I'm just going to open up just an area of this sampled image um, so that I see this dust and scratches layer just in, in, that, in that little square and I'll zoom in even further so that you can see. What I'm trying to do here is match the noise in the dust and scratches layer that's already in the image. If you look at any image it's always going to have the littlest bit of noise so what you want to do is select your layer that's pretty much invisible other than this box right here and I hope you guys can see that um, that's why I'm zoomed in so far and with the background copy layer selected I'm going to go into filter noise and add noise now I'm gonna play around with my settings here see if I can find something similar to the noise that's back here. So it's not going to be very much. You could either start it, it really though depends on the image that you're working with, right? So it could be an extremely noisy image. Um, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you're just matching the noise as closely as possible with what you already have, right? I think that's good. You will still get a little bit of banding um, because that layer was so blurred but you don't end up seeing it. So what we're going to do now is Option or Alt click on your mask thumbnail over here and we're going to zoom out so that you can see the whole image and you can see that I was just dealing with a very very small 
area of the image. And what I'm going to do is basically just get rid of this now. You could either paint with your brush tool at 100% with black, or you can go into the edit menu and hit fill and make sure black is selected and then just hit OK and that's going to completely black out that mask and make it like it was before. And then we're going to Option Alt click back on this uh, layer thumbnail here. So we are still seeing none of that dust and scratches layer. If you want to look again, here's the dust and scratches layer visible. Here's the dust and scratches layer not visible. So we've added our noise to the dust and scratches layer. And what I like to do is simply paint on this mask with a white paintbrush. And I'm going to, you know, you can be fairly heavy handed with this. It's really, it's, that's what's so great about this technique is that you don't have to worry about those small, um, getting really, really close to the, you know, the area where the hair meets the, uh, the background because, you know, you're just painting in the entire background. All right, look at that. You know, in two seconds, I've gone ahead and gotten rid of all of those things, which would have taken me, if I were doing it, you know, strand by strand, much, much longer. And, you know, she doesn't have many to begin with, so I'm not that concerned. But, you know, e even if we do come in to, what are we at here, 100%, you can't see where I painted those stray hairs out. You just... It's just not, you know, not there. So I hope you guys learned something and I hope you're able to apply this to your workflow on a daily basis and really, really save some time doing it. As far as the research I've done, there aren't very many really good techniques on removing flyaway hairs and this one just, I think, works beautifully. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did, take a look around sharkpixel.com, and um, if you're on Facebook, you could like my Shark Pixel Facebook group as well. So have a great day, and hope to see you again on another tutorial sometime soon.